An afternoon stroll with friends went horribly wrong for this 45-year-old woman when she was raped for the third time in June this year. Her alleged rapist held at gunpoint while he raped her. To protect her identity, her voice is not being used. But she says while he was raping her, he kept saying, I want to give you the AIDS I have. I've got AIDS. Kathleen Day, director of the Rape Crisis Trust in Cape Town, says the link between HIV and violence against women is a common phenomenon. A lot of rapists carry other sexually transmitted diseases which allow for sores and open wounds, which then also adds to the trauma and the easy transmission of the virus. Quite often there's more than one rapist involved. And where there are multiple perpetrators, there are multiple injuries, the seriousness of the injuries increase. Post-exposure prophylaxis, PIP, a combination of antiretroviral medications, can be used to prevent the transmission of HIV. But to get the treatment, rape victims must undergo an HIV test to determine if they're already infected. If they are not, then they are treated with PIP for 28 days. Many South Africans who are raped don't know that there are drugs that can prevent HIV. This woman was one of the lucky ones. They did all the tests. Then at the same time, they told me I was going to use ARVs. That was the worst day of my life. I finished all the tablets they gave me, and they did a second test. They confirmed that I was HIV negative. Dr. Kevin Reby from Inova says for the medication to be effective, it must be taken within 72 hours after the rape. The earlier the better. Within the first 24 hours is probably even better than allowing for a 72-hour time frame. It's absolutely indicated. If somebody has been raped, there's a very high background rate of HIV, so there's a very real chance that the perpetrator may have been HIV positive. Kelly Malt from the Gender Health and Justice Research Unit says in some instances rape victims aren't told about the availability of such treatments because other people have abused the medication. Sex workers, for example, will abuse the system when they've had unprotected sex with clients, that young girls will falsely cry rape when they've been found to be having sex with their boyfriends, for example. There's a lot of not only knowledge but attitudes that erode survivors' ability to access PEP and other healthcare services, counselling, or even simply discourage people when they report. And experts warn that the treatment is not without risk. If a woman subsequently became infected with HIV and needed to be treated with similar medications, resistance might develop and treatment would not be effective. Dr. Khadebe says the availability of the treatment may also depend on the health facility or the professional the patient is seen by. Not everyone actually access post-exposure prophylaxis. There are certain requirements for someone who will get PEP. Someone who comes in with a condom burst, they might not necessarily get PEP. Health Minister Dr. Aaron Motswaledi says he tried to make it clear how important it is to follow the guidelines. You can't say when somebody's in that big trouble of having been violated in the first place, rape itself is a criminal offence, and facing the prospect of getting a disease like HIV AIDS, start asking them about police numbers. So I said they must be human, they must treat them first and ask questions later. As a result of fear and stigma, Men, women and children are reluctant to report cases of rape because of the lack of faith in the criminal justice system. The Sexual Offences Act can compel an alleged rapist to undergo an HIV test. But police officers say very few complainants ask for the information, even when the perpetrator has been caught. They don't know that they can. They're usually too traumatised to ask. Yulene Phyllis for SABC News in Johannesburg.